Here we go. <laughs> With four kids. I can't even measure anymore. I just scoop and scoop and scoop. I never know how much because they're always going to eat more than I make. I just have to keep going. <laughs> the other part of making the sourdough batter is to put one part starter, uh, put three or four parts to that of flour, and then put like one part sugar, and then put milk until it gets nice and creamy. And you just keep it on mixing. While mixing, sometimes I see areas that still have some wet, I mean dry dough or flour. So you just keep going. I just add a splash of milk at a time and just keep going until it gets to the consistency that you need it for the batter. This is about the consistency you want. If you take a spoonful and you pick it up and it stays connected as it comes down, that's about how watery you want it to be. Um, not too much more than that and it should be fine. So this is the right consistency because as I hold it up six, eight inches above the bowl, um, it, it stays connected and doesn't fall apart. And But it's not too watery, but it mixed around. And this again is just starter, flour, sugar, and milk. Let it sit overnight. In the morning, I'll add eggs and vanilla and a little bit of baking powder and then start cooking. Um, the other thing people ask me about the starter is when I bake and I mix up a recipe, like the dough for the pancakes or waffles or something of that, or cinnamon buns or something of that nature. Um, when I put that dough together, how long do I let that sit at room temp uh, for it to rise and do its thing? Again, I just do overnight because it's an easy way for me to keep track of it. If I put it in the middle of the counter overnight, I will not forget to put it away in the morning when I get up to make breakfast um, or to use it because I plan on making breakfast that day. Um, overnight works for me because, you know, having four kids, we only get like six hours of sleep or less per night. So if I just do it before I go to bed at night, by the time I wake up in the morning and get started, it'll be fine. Um, some recipes I looked at tell you to let the mixture that you make the batter stay for about four hours or six hours or eight hours 12 hours or different types um, I've tested with different time periods so when I first did it I did about four hours um, that did okay it barely had a sourdough flavor but it was still there um, for me six to eight hours seems to work the best I've tried one around 12 hours and at that point the sourdough flavor was so strong and pungent that I didn't really like the taste of the pancakes as much so for me, um, as long as it gets about that six hour mark, which for me overnight, it gets that, um, that's usually the best way for me to do it. And then I don't really have to think about it because I'm all about efficiency and trying to make things easy for myself. It's already an extra step using sourdough, but I like the benefits of it. So in order to make it easy for me, I just let it sit on the counter before I go to bed. And whatever time I wake up and start cooking breakfast, that's how long it sits there. Then I don't have to think about it and it will never be 12 hours because I never get 12 hours of sleep. So it'll never taste like that horrible pungent one that I made one time before. Morning time, we got eggs, some vanilla. I actually use imitation vanilla because it costs less and provides the same flavor. <laughs> I know some vanilla slops would hate that, but I don't care. Um, and then this is just baking powder. And I just put a little bit because you only need a little bit of baking powder. And then mix all that up and we'll be good to go. What you want to see in the mix when it sits and rises overnight is this sort of tackiness that comes together where it sort of looks a little bit lumpy. Um, that is the, the probiotic in the starter, or the bacteria that's in there, uh, mixing in and it creates air bubbles and gas and those bubbles come through and it sort of makes the butter a little bit lumpy like that. As you mix it up, you might still see more air bubbles coming through. Um, again, the extra sugar we put in there it was to help speed up that process of the bacteria eating and causing the sourdough. So you can see some little bubbles popping in there. That's that's from. Um, as you mix it, it won't be as tacky. It'll go a little bit smooth again. And again, I just added eggs, uh, vanilla, and baking powder. And now we are good to go. Some people talk to me and ask me about how to feed my sourdough starter. Basically, I take one cup of flour and one cup of water and put it in my sourdough uh, container. And then I just mix it up. And then you let that sit on the counter uh, for a few hours, just until you see it rise and bubble a little bit. And then you put it in the fridge and it's good in the fridge, in my experience, up to about 10 days uh, without having to feed it again. So the first, and I feed it every time I use some to cook. Cause when I cook, I have to take out enough starter to. How to feed your starter? Oh, it's easy. One cup of flour and one cup of water. 
Mix it up while you leave some starter in the bottom and then you let it sit on the counter. Yield whatever I'm cooking, um, but you always wanna make sure to leave about a quarter cup to a half cup of starter in your container. And then when you feed it, you feed it as much as you want based on how much starter you wanna use for your next recipe. I normally keep two to three cups worth of starter in my container. So if I use a recipe and I only take out one cup, I'll just put one cup of water, one cup of flour. If I take out two cups of starter, then I'll put two cups of water, two cups of flour. You know, whatever you put in there, you do a one-to-one -one ratio of water and flour. And then um, again, I leave it on the counter for a couple hours after I feed it. You don't have to though. I've had times where I didn't, was in a rush or was gonna go somewhere, couldn't leave it out. So I just fed it by putting one flour, one water, mixing it up, and then I just put it right in the fridge. Either way, um, it'll still do the same thing. Just in the fridge, it slows the process down of the starter bacteria being able to eat at the flour. So in the fridge, it makes it last longer. If you, some recipes and like fresh bakery shops, they keep starter room temp all the time. And they literally have to feed their starter every two to three days because it stays at room temp all the time. So they have to do it very regularly to keep it fresh and keep it from turning into some nastiness you don't want to mess with. Um, so the fridge just slows down the process so that you can have more time because I don't have time to be feeding something and I don't bake every two or three days. Um, my life is just too hectic for that.